watch us sit right back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip that started from this tropic port aboard this tiny ship. The fateful trip of the SS Minnow turned into a zany voyage of more than 30 years for the seven castaways of Gilligan's Island. I think it proves that silly comedy does have a you know, place on the entertainment field somewhere. Since the series creation in 1964, Gilligan's Island has never left the air and has been shown more times than any other program in television history. But the sailing has not been nearly as smooth for the cast. The actors received almost no residuals and have struggled to find other acting jobs. The sitcom was torpedoed by critics. It's the beginning of the Gilligization of television. <laughs> It was recast and refitted by network executives. It was devastating. It was, it was the first time in my adult life that I remember weeping. I think we are the longest running show in the history of our television syndication. I think we passed I Love Lucy. This is the story of the show that nobody wanted, a show that refused to sink quietly over the horizon. The seven castaways stranded after their boat is wrecked in a storm included five colorful passengers, the skipper and his hapless mate. Each episode would involve the cast in a series of zany misadventures aimed at surviving the ordeal and each other. Schwartz was equally taken with 28-year-old Denver and offered him the part of Gilligan after only one screen test. A trio of younger and less experienced actors rounded out the cast of Gilligan's Island. Blonde Nancy McCarthy was selected as Bunny, dashing heartthrob John Gabriel as the professor, and pretty redhead Kit Smythe as Ginger. The main thing that kept going through through my head was, I'm going to be on television. <laughs> I'm going to be up there. You know, it was, it was for all the wrong reasons. Uh, but it was exciting. It was, it was damned exciting. To capture the look of a deserted island, Schwartz convinced CBS executives to let him shoot the pilot along an undeveloped stretch of beach on the Hawaiian island of Kauai. Schwartz, a musical novice, wrote the famous ballad at his piano in one night. Schwartz had his series, but there was a catch. The network required him to recast the characters of Ginger, Bunny, and the Professor. Schwartz personally broke the news to the actors. He said, well, they tested the pilot, and the three of you, Nancy McCarthy and Kit Smythe and myself, came out the lowest. Today I will know right away, soon as it shows. Thank you. Here's a bit of trivia for you. I was the first professor on Gilligan's Island. What happened was, see, I did the pilot, and then they replaced me in the series. Why, you may well ask? Thank you. <laughs> Who knows? They never tell you. They never tell you. You know, I, the producer, uh, Sherwood Schwartz, lovely man, he, he said, no, 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 you were, you were too young at the time to play the professor. Well, I'll, I'll cling that to my bosom until I die. Anyhow, of course, I was devastated, but I soon got over it. Although, truth be told, every now and then, when I see a particularly poignant episode <laughs> of Gilligan's Island, I tear up. And I wondered to myself, what might have been? One desolate crew, lost and vegetarian. The house, Ginger and Marianne. This nearly was mine. I felt like a star. Bob Denver was by my side. Jim Baggins would give me five. This nearly was mine. I thought I did so well. They told me I was swell. 
Then came that call from hell that said, it's over. I was unemployed. I'd kill for the thrill again to be next to Gilligan. This nearly was mine. <laughs> a, a good friend of mine, Irvin Drake, who wrote It Was a Very Good Year, among a lot of other classic hits. Um, when he was a young man, he was very much in love with a, a young showgirl named Edith. He wanted to marry her. But Edith was reluctant to tie her fortunes to a, a wannabe songwriter, and she broke it off. She also broke Irvin's heart. But out of his anguish, came one of the great torch songs of all time. I can't shake you no how Please, just leave me alone I got those Monday blues Straight through Sunday blues The very first Broadway show I ever saw was uh, Frank Lesser's uh, Most Happy Fella. In preparation for this show, I interviewed Jo Lesser, the widow of Frank, and, and she told me something very funny, I thought. Um, Frank Lesser would get furious when people would refer to his show as, uh, as an opera. He says, it's not an opera. It's, it's a, a musical with a lot of songs. 54 songs. <laughs> Come on, Frank, it was an opera. <laughs> this was a big hit from the show. Standing on the corner, watching all the girls go by. Standing on the corner, watching all the girls go by. Well, you don't know a nicer occupation. Matter of fact, neither do I. It's a lot of chutzpah to have a piano player who sings as good as Shelley Markham, I'll tell you. Back in the day, I did a film for Howard Hawks called El Dorado. <laughs> and I got to write the title song with the brilliant Nelson Riddle. No cowboy hat, huh? <laughs> Through sunshine and shadow, from darkness till noon, over mountains that reach from the sky to the moon, a man with a dream that will never let go keeps searching to find. To the end of the rainbow, ride boldly, ride till you find El Dorado. The winds become bitter, sky turns to gray, his body grows weary, he can't find his way, but he'll never turn back, though he's lost in the snow. For he has to find 